The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. Today is Friday, December fifteenth. We're here to break down this wonderful eight-game card. Subbing in for my good buddy Bratton Ackersley. He's uh, a little under the weather over there. Uh, best wishes to Bratton. Hope everything's okay. Hope you get better. Get uh, you know throat's a little sore for him. So we're gonna give him the we're gonna give him the night off. Let him uh, let him rest that thing. But uh, he's still crushing. It. He's still good. You guys are still gonna see him on Twitter and all that good stuff. Doesn't stop his fingertips, but. It's back to back. So I feel like, you know, Dave and me, uh, my good buddy Dave Metcalf over here, but, you know, neither one of us ruled out in back to backs. We're both here to play. Uh, you know, Dave, are you, are you on any sort of restrictions on uh, the second half of the back to back? Are you good to go? You know, I have to say, I have no restrictions. I, I'm a full go for a full lot of minutes with you. So looking forward to this. Absolutely. And but while we say that, uh, we say that when we're going to try to try, we've been going a little longer on our shows. Uh, we, you know, we, we tell all the listeners we're going to try to keep it under an hour, uh, and then we end up talking like I am right now. So we're going to try to motor through this. We're going to try to pinpoint. We have eight games, so we can be a little bit more specific. We don't need to you know, necessarily love uh, you know, so many people from the same teams. And the, and the other positive is uh, we actually just don't have as many games where there's only eight-man or uh, six-man rotations. There's going to be a couple of games that are, that are lacking a little bit. Uh, but they're starting to slowly come back as we go. But before we jump into anything, just a quick shout-out to our presenting sponsors. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. And if you haven't checked them out, guys, check them out. It is mybookie.ag, the number one sports betting site, the only site I will ever bet with and place bets with. Uh, the reputation is rock solid. It's absolutely fantastic. You guys head over there. Use that promo code HoopBall. You'll get a 50% match uh, halfway up to $1,000. It's fantastic. Put 1000 bucks in. Use the promo code HoopBall. You're getting 500 free dollars. It's free money, instant money. They're the only sports book I guarantee and trust. I don't give my stamp of approval very easily, guys. NFL, playoffs, NBA, everything. Check it out. They do the parlays. They have all the good stuff. And you can even check it out. They have a live casino in there as well. So you can, if you want to play table games, all the table games that you would see at your local casino, they have there. And then their doors do not close. They are open 24 hours, seven days a week. Check them out, guys. Use that promo code HOOPBALL. And another, another company, dear, near to my heart, Manscaped. Uh, I mean, this company forever changed the grooming game uh, with all their products from the lawnmower 3.0, the weed whacker, uh, the Aaron here is no trimmer. It, it's absolutely every single product they have is fantastic. And then they're like, I, you always hear me talk about it. I think it's my personal favorite. It's their line of just like body washes and, and conditioners and all their all the, the entire line is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I say the entire line because you can get all of it if you go get the perfect package kit. But before you check out, make sure you use the promo code HOOPBALL20 because you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. That's H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L-2-0. And you will get 20% off plus free shipping. So, hey, we're going to jump into things, man. This is an interesting slate. One I'm kind of looking forward to. Uh, and we get we get the, the most, like, I guess the most knowledgeable or the game you have to be the most knowledgeable about is what I'm going to assume now that we start having some bodies coming back. With this Orlando and Boston game. That's the one leading off. Orlando traveling to Boston. Taking on the Celtics. No game total. No spread. We still have a lot of news to wait on. We slowly have some of these Boston guys coming back out of the health and safety protocol. Still something worth monitoring. As far as the injury report goes, though, and this is all we have to go off of uh, at this very moment, is uh, it's a little rocky. So, it's considered out. Boston Celtics, Carson Edwards, Romeo Lankford, Jason Tatum, and Kemba Walker, Robert Williams. All out. Questionable. Jalen Brown. Devontae Green. Semi Ojale, Daniel Pace. For the Magic, Alfred Mukaminu, Mo Bamba, Michael Carter Williams, Evan Fournier, Markel Fultz, Jonathan Isaac, and Chuma Okiki all ruled out. So, Dave, I'll pass it over to you. Seems like we're going to have a little bit of value and also seems like some spots that we can go to. Who are you looking at for Orlando? Yeah, you definitely touched on it. Uh, on the Orlando side, there's a couple guys I'm looking at. Um, and I think for me, it really starts with, with the two main guys. Um, two guys that, that play in the front court for the Orlando Magic who I really love. Aaron Gordon, 7,300. Price up a little bit. Uh, in this type of matchup, I think he's going to potentially thrive. Um, he's really been coming on recently, coming off a, almost a 45-point fantasy point effort. Um, he's his price in the 7,000 for the first time. So it might shy away a lot of people, but I actually lo- love him in this type of matchup. Uh, and I think he'll be fairly low-owned as well. Uh, and then the other guy I'm looking at is Nikola Vucevic. 
nine thousand. Uh, absolutely great price tag. Um, he's he's been hovering in the eight thousand, nine thousands the entire season. Um, he's just as solid as they come in, in the center position, coming off fifty three point effort. I absolutely love him, uh, and that's pretty much it uh, for me. Uh, who really tickles your fancy? That's it, man. Uh, I'm right there, right on board with you. Those two players. I think this is a fantastic matchup. Uh, Tristan Thompson off the injury report, so Boston will have some big men back on the other side. They're not going to be completely lacking. But Aaron Gordon has pretty much been playing point forward now that they're you know only really have Cole Anthony. Uh, so I continue to uh, expect to see that. And you know eight assists and five assists in the past two previous games. If they're hovering around there, the points, the rebounds, the minutes are back up. I think that's a fair price tag for him at seventy three. I like the matchup, so I like to Aaron Gordon, and I'll always play Mister Consistent in Busevic. Nine K, great price tag. Uh, even when Boston has all their centers, they still struggle against the opposing centers. So uh, I'm not scared off of this. I'll be playing both those guys, and that's it. So ready to slide over to the Boston side. Looking Let's at this team, we got some good guys over here that we can take a look at. Daniel Tice, questionable to come back at 5,500. He would probably immediately be slotted back into that starting center position alongside of or power forward alongside of Tristan Thompson. So uh, some of the center value that we've been taking advantage of, uh, you know, it, it, it's sapping up. It's slowly, slowly going away. Uh, nonetheless, there's a lot of options. We're talking about playing some of these Orlando guys. Who are you looking at at Boston? Yeah, the Boston side is really going to come down to who's going to be starting in that center position. Uh, if Tristan Thompson ends up getting the start, 4,800, uh, certainly going to be in play. I, I'll have some interest in Tristan Thompson. I don't know how much uh, just because of, of the slate itself. So I'm, I'm not going to have too many shares of him. Uh, the only guys I'm looking at, Jalen Brown, uh, is always rock solid. One of my favorite plays, um, slate in, slate out. 8900 is a bit pricey, a questionable price tag, a questionable, sorry, injury tag. If he ends up playing, um, he's going to be probably a favorite play on the Boston side. However, if he sits, all that usage is going to go to Jason Tatum, 9200, and then he's going to be my absolutely favorite play of this oh, entire Tatum, Tatum, Tatum's already, uh, he's been ruled out, actually. So Tatum's, um, he's, he's on the injury report as out as of 8.30 tonight. We're recording this podcast for right around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So he's actually still ruled out. He was actually confirmed uh, with a positive COVID case. So it's not necessarily just showing uh, negative tests several days in a row. He has a mandatory 10 to 14 day quarantine. So we're not going to see him for at least a few more games. That's a great call. I clearly missed that uh, in my notes. And uh, big apologies. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, listen, um, missing something like that nowadays with everything going on. Uh, normally, I'd be like, shame on you. No. Uh, uh, there's so much injury news. There's so many, you know, health protocols. Who has COVID? Who's just, you know, uh, like Zion, for instance. We'll talk about him in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, a guy that just didn't have a positive or negative test. It was inconclusive. Uh, and now he's playing again tonight. So there's a lot that's going on right now, man. So there's no fault to anybody if you struggle with the news. Uh, that's why we always recommend, you know, following us on Twitter, getting in the Discord, doing all those little things, uh, just to make sure that you're up to date at the very least. And if you're not going to be able to monitor, this news up until lock, you know, limit your shares and understand the games you're in uh, because you're going to be at a disadvantage. There's a lot of late breaking stuff that happens pretty often this season. And most of the lineups that you see that are cashing out pretty highly are ones that have that late swap uh, available for them. So well, I'll pass it back over to you after that long winded statement, though. Uh, no, so I, now, that you, now that there's no Tatum, <laughs> who would you yeah, look at? With no Tatum, if Jalen Brown suits up and he ends up playing, um, he's going to be my absolute favorite play on the Celtics side. Exactly what I said before, right? Um, otherwise, uh, I'll have some interest in Peyton Pritchard, 4,700 as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, so please take it away. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm, I'm pretty much cool with that, too. I don't love that price tag for Brown, 8,900 stuff. You know, the guy's been pretty much quarantined for the past few days. Not like he's not a game shape or anything necessarily, but uh, that's that's a that's an awfully expensive price tag. At different positions, but we're talking about Vucevic right across the ball at 9K. Um, I prefer him. But nonetheless, he's still in play. I'm not playing Marcus Smart at 7,600. I could see playing, you know, Tristan Thompson or Daniel Tice, but we'll we'll be talking about some other options that are definitely, uh, you know, viable as well. So when push comes to shove, I don't know if I'm going to land on these guys. It's worth noting that Grant Williams is also going to be back as well. So the front court is pretty much where it should be. So these guys are going to go back to chopping up those minutes pretty quickly, but we'll keep it moving. Uh, next game of the night, 7:30 Eastern Standard Time game, New York Knicks traveling to Cleveland, pick on the Cavs. This game, surprisingly, does not have a game total. It's not have a spread. It's the theme of the season. Get used to it. Uh, unfortunately, that's 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 what we're dealing with. But for the Cavs, Matthew Della Vadova, Darius Garland, Kevin Love, Kevin Porter Jr., Colin Sexton, Dylan Windler, all ruled out, while Andre Drummond is probable. And for the Knicks, Reggie Bullock is questionable. Alec Burke's doubtful. Frank Nittacolino ruled out. Looking at this Knicks side of the ball, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get my thoughts out real quick. I had some random last late. Uh, I just want to say, even if you think it's a blowout, 
Randall's pretty much ball proof. We, we saw that with Thibs. Uh, he basically just ran him out there regardless of the score. You look at that final score, it doesn't look like a blowout. It was a blowout. And the only reason it kind of caught up is because he left Randall in for, for an extended period of pointless minutes. So 9,100 going against this Cleveland team. I, I feel like every time I touch Randall, it's fool's gold, and it's probably bad news for everybody. But I have to have a slight bit of interest in him. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's always a great matchup when you're going against Cleveland. Uh, it's a fair price tag for him for a guy that's been uh, putting up down games for what his price tag's at. So I'm expecting a decent halfway bounce back game. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm not I'm not really playing any, anybody else really here. I do like this matchup for a guy like Peyton, but he's starting to get up there in price tag at 6,800. And I'm, you know, don't play Obi Top. And until we can see him get a significant role uh, in this rotation, it's it's really just you know almost impossible to trust him. Um, and then quickly would be a rock solid value play just because he's you know pretty much maintaining around 22 to 25 minutes, uh, and he's taking a high volume shot attempts. He's got 25 shot attempts over the past two games. So those that's it. That's it for me on the Knicks. Not too uh, too high on them, but there's definitely a couple options we can take a look at. How about you? Yeah, no, that's a great call out. I actually was was circling uh, Julius Randle in my player pool. He's a guy that, as people in the Discord have probably have listened to, I, I'm not. A, it's not a guy that I play very often, but this would be a great opportunity for, to actually play Julius Randle at any one of the price tag, especially with Thibodeau's complete disregard for for any type of, of game script in terms of leaving starters in. So that's that's absolutely a great call out. Uh, so I'll have some shares of him. The only other guy I'm actually looking at, as you mentioned it, uh, going dumpster diving and looking at Emmanuel quickly. Uh, 3,300, you know, catching lightning in a bottle. There's always an opportunity. He's, he's, my, he's my pick for the Nikhil Alexander-Walker equivalent. Uh, just doesn't get enough opportunity. Uh, but when he does, he's an absolute um, absolute sniper with, and has no, no issue with the confidence when he comes to chucking up the rock. So I like him. And that's pretty much it. I, I'm going to line with you across the board here on the next side. I'm a big quickly guy. I don't know how I'm not sold on how good he is and, uh, you know, really going to be. He's young. We haven't seen a lot of him yet. Uh, but he seems like he's got a lot of, you know, veteran intangibles as far as defense and uh, IQ. So I'm excited to kind of see what he can do. Um, I'm oversold on Alfred Payton at this point. Like, we, we know what we, what we got for him. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, he might be better right now, but yeah, let's see. It's problem is Tibbs. Tibbs hates rookies. But Cleveland side of the ball, Drummond being probable, 9,300, you know, He's he's been the shooting percentage has been down this season. Uh, they've been playing a little bit better as of late, and we're starting to kind of see those forty to fifty point games start to slowly turn out from him. So ninety three hundred, I don't think he's a bad play. I prefer Vucevic in that first game for three hundred dollars less. So not expecting Jared Allen to be with the team. Uh, he's listed as questionable right now, but it'd be surprising if he's ready to play. So don't you know? No, don't be complaining. Take any chances to find him. So outside of maybe uh, taking a couple of shots and guys like Dotson, he, even though he's priced up at 52, knowing that there's no point guards over there, he should continue to see decent run. Or maybe in a Coro at 3,900. I just don't have a lot of interest. I think these guys are priced right. And the Knicks have been playing pretty solid defense under tips. Yeah, that's an absolutely great call. Um, I actually don't like anyone on the Cavs side. Uh, you mentioned Andre Drummond um, has not really been living up to, to kind of his price tag. He's actually priced up in 9300 in this one. Um, you know, I think he'd be more comfortable in this matchup in the 8000 range, and then he would be an absolute smash opportunity. But at that price tag, I don't have a lot of faith in him. Larry Nance, 6600, absolutely better a better NBA player than he is a fantasy uh, DFS contributor at this point. Um, just doesn't do enough from a volume perspective to really provide value at that price tag. It's hard to trust. C.D. Osmond, another guy that's you know been getting, given plenty of opportunity, just hasn't been able to live up live up to it. That price tag is also a bit too high for my liking, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. I have no interest on the Cavs side, really. Uh, I think we can move on. All right, next game, Dallas Mavericks traveling until Milwaukee. Take on the Bucks. It's going to be a fun one in this one. I'm really looking forward to this, not just because I'm a Mavs fan. It's going to be a good game. 227 game total. I actually have a spread on this one. Bucks being favored by six points. As far as injuries are concerned, for the Mavs, Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleber, Dwight Powell, <coughs> excuse me, Josh Richardson, all ruled out. Chris Stapps, Boris is probable. For the Bucs, Torrey Craig, Drew Holiday, or Torrey Craig ruled out, Drew Holiday is probable. Now, looking at this team, being unbiased here as a Mavs fan, we have two of the most expensive price players on the slate in this game, between Giannis and Luka Doncic. I'm going to be air it out right now. Only people I'm looking at on Dallas, and none of them include Luka Doncic. Yeah, I'm going to be looking at a little bit of Willie Cauley Stein at 4,500. Don't love it, but the Mavs have been forward out with him starting at center. The minutes are slowly creeping up. Uh, he's not going to do a lot offensively, uh, but he's been getting it done on the rebound side. He's going to chip in some defensive stats too. So 4,500 on my Willie Cauley Stein. And then I don't mind taking a look at a guy like Trey Burke at 4,900. Um, not like a very confident play, not very cash safe, 
But at 4,900, a guy that started, took 12 shots, took 13 the game before, should continue to see decent usage with all these other wings out. Don't mind him. And I don't mind Luca if you want to play him. I'm not hating on him. I just prefer Giannis on the other side. Uh, point per dollar, only $200 less in this matchup. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. I will pass it over to you now, Dave, for Dallas. Yeah, no, that's an interesting call. An absolute shocker, I think, for all the listeners, and me especially, not, not having an interest in Luka Doncic, Doncic in this primetime matchup against Giannis. So uh, so kudos to you for, for not using that bias <laughs> to, to make DFS decisions. And that's, and that's a testament to, to your professional skills. Um, but jumping into uh, the It's not easy, category. man. Listen, I'm, I, I will have a share of Doncic. I'm not going to say here. I'm not. But when push comes to shove, I'm going to be probably more overweight on Giannis than I will Doncic. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm I'm kind of with you. I I actually was curious to see where you're going to go because on the map side, I really like Willie Cauley Stein. I think he's going to be potentially under owned, and he's probably one of the better value big men on this entire slate of 4,500. Um, he's a guy that can get a ton of rebounds. He can get blocks. He can get points in a hurry from a DFS perspective. So I like Willie Cauley Stein, and I too will have some shares of Trey Burke as well for 100. I had him listed as a potential great uh, mid tier shooting guard option. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it as well on, on, on the Mavs side of the ball. Yeah, and when we slide over to the Bucks, I pretty much said my set to I'm playing Giannis. If, anytime I'm considering Giannis, the only time I, uh, you know, I slide to somebody else is maybe like a Middleton as a pivot. And that's the only reason it's a pivot from playing Giannis in four or five lineups. I have Middleton and maybe one. It's the hedge your bet here and there where the, I, I expect this game to stay fairly close. I'm not expecting the Bucks to blow them out. Uh, in those types of scenarios, Giannis plays pretty decent minutes, at least 30. And <laughs> that's a lot saying uh, his head coach over there. Uh, but we've seen Giannis in close games play upwards this season, anywhere between 33 and 38 minutes. So that kind of point per minute guy, when he's playing like this and this close of a matchup, he gets up in these types of close matchups. I uh, I definitely have some interest. And I expect him to be lower owned than Giannis. Uh, I mean, than, uh, than Luca, And maybe some other options that we'll talk about. So he's not necessarily my favorite high-priced option. Uh, I mean, well, I guess, because the other guys that I like are, are lower-priced on him. But uh, he's, there's still some other high price guys I like that I'll have probably just as much, if not more, ownership then. And that's all I'm really looking at. And if you think that this game's going to get out of hand, then you could look at Bobby Portis. Otherwise, uh, probably not playing anybody else other than that. I, I think we're absolutely in sync uh, on tonight's card. I think the back to back set has really opened us up. But uh, I, I have to agree with you, Giannis, all the way for me. Uh, 10800 is a great price tag. Um, I, I've barely been playing Giannis this season. Uh, just given the ball potential, but I, I expect this this matchup to be somewhat close, just because of you know the way that Luca has been playing recently and, and the way the Mavs are, are starting to, to gel a little bit, especially with Porzingis um, back in the fold a little bit. Um, I, I actually like Giannis a lot. He's probably my favorite play of this entire game. Uh, and then I'll have some interest also in Chris Middleton, 8200, always in play, uh, always has 50 point potential, especially if this game stays close. Uh, it would be a great pivot from from the Giannis uh, chalk potentially. So, so that's pretty much it. Um, I think we can we can jump right into the next one. Absolutely. Memphis Grizzlies traveling through Minnesota to take on the Timberwolves. Uh, for this one, 224 game total. Minnesota being favored by three points. As far as injuries are concerned, check out this uh, this here old injury report. Memphis Grizzlies, we got Jaron Jackson Jr., Jonte Porter, Killian Tilly, Justice Winslow, all ruled out. John Morant is considered questionable. Surprise, surprise. Creeping back. Got to keep an eye on that. That would obviously have a major impact on the Grizzlies and the usage going all around. For the Timberwolves, Wancho, Hernan Gomez, Jay Glamon, Ricky Rubio, all ruled out. Wancho, Rubio in the protocol. Uh, and it looks like Josh Kogi and Carl Anthony Towns are probable. So this game's going to be interesting. Uh, definitely a game we're going to have to monitor. And some game, and a game that we're probably going to have some value in nonetheless. So looking at this Memphis team, if John Moran plays, I'm probably just going to ease off him in the first game back at 7,500. It's a great price tag if we know he's healthy. There's no restriction or anything like that. So if we happen to get that news, sure. I'll take some shots on him. But otherwise, I'm probably not going to play him either way. I'm not playing Tyson 65. The price tag's creeping up there for pretty much just a steals and assist specialist. And then, you know, I can see maybe playing some Joe Val. This is a great matchup for him. You know, Carl Anthony Towns doesn't play defense. He just smashed him in this matchup not too long ago. So I'll keep an eye on him. And I think D'Anthony Melton at 4,300. We're, uh, we're seeing the minutes start to climb. If Job plays, it kind of might put a damper on that. And, I, you know, I, I might, you know, limit my exposure. But played 25 minutes on the last one. Shot 7 to 12. And he just racked up a bunch of counting stats. That's what he's good for. Two steals, a block, four assists, only one board. But generally good for at least three to five in that category. So I have some interest in some D'Anthony Melton. And I'll probably play uh, maybe a share or two of some Joe Val. But that's it. How about yourself over there? Yeah, um, I think, again, we're absolutely insane. The Anthony Mountain is, is the guy I'm looking at really on this side of the ball. John Moran news, that's going to certainly be a, a tricky thing to monitor and absolutely have to check that out as we close it on, on lock. 
Um, but otherwise, the Anthony Melton is my only play, really, I'm looking at. I also have some interest a little bit in Brandon Clark. Um, you know, I, I think he's getting a lot of confidence, especially with the impending arrival of Jaron Jackson Jr. So Brandon Clark is a guy that has still a little bit of, of life left, and that price tag is pretty tolerable, um, especially in this matchup against Minnesota. So I think I'll like him a lot, especially because he'll be very low-owned. Uh, and then I'll have uh, some interest as well in, in Jonas Allen Jr., 7,100, coming off a monster double-double, um, looking for him to, to kind of step up as well against this soft interior of the Timberwolves. So, and and that's, that's pretty much it on, for, for Memphis and for me as well. Perfect. We'll slide over to this Minnesota the side of the ball. And this is where I have a little bit more interest because Carl Anthony Towns uh, is back to looking like Cat. You know, playing playing decent enough minutes, 34 the, in that last game against Memphis, 37 in the game prior, first two games back since he hurt his wrist. And he's put up 50 points in both of them. Great matchup. Feels like another 50-point banger. Feels like one of the best cash plays if you're spending up on the board. So I do not mind some Carl Anthony Towns. And he obviously always has some GPP appeal as well. Uh, with Hernan Gomez out, though, that's the big news, and that's the big thing we have to monitor. What do they do at power forward? Because uh, Jared Culver is an option that they were going with at points in time before Hernan Gomez was inserted, but he just looks terrible. Uh, he's basically, you know, slowly, slowly getting his minutes reduced, and you know, I wouldn't say phased out of the rotation, but he's definitely not doing himself any favor. So, one name I've been mentioning to keep an eye on has been Jared Vanderbilt, and he's been playing uh, pretty much as the best big man on this team outside of outside of Carol Anthony Towns, and. You know, wouldn't shock me going against another big lineup of Brandon Clark and Jonas Valanciunas if they try to match it. So keep your eye on that. If we see Vanderbilt gets that starting nod at 3,900, he's a guy that I will absolutely be all over for uh, GPPs. And, I, and even that with his point per minute ability, if we know he's playing at least 20 minutes at that price, there's no doubt about it. He's probably pretty safe for cash as well. So uh, he's probably one of my favorite options alongside of Carl Anthony Towns. I do love Malik Beasley and kind of the scoring and the usage he's been taking, but he's getting up there at 7,100. We'll get to some other options that I just prefer uh, if we're going to end up spending around that range. Yeah, that's absolutely a great call. Um, Jared Vanderbilt, again, a guy that is given the opportunity, if he does get minutes, um, that, that fantasy per minute upside is huge. He hasn't really had a real breakout game outside of outside of his first real game action where he put up um, where he put up a huge game where he had almost 30 fantasy points uh, back on New Year's Day. Outside of that, he hasn't really shown that that point per, per minute breakout ability. But I fully expect him to to have that opportunity. Oh, you're, you're you're sleeping on him over there. You uh, Denver Portland. He had uh, back to back almost 30 DK point games and about 22 uh, been average in those games. So. If, uh, if you know, it's a little different, though. He's also playing against Cat, so alongside of Cat, as opposed to when Cat was out. So, not to cut you off. Um, but we kind of have seen it, I think. That's the thing. He, I think we have seen it. It's just if it's going to be available for him is the big question. Yeah, absolutely. That That's really the, that's going to be the, the crux of it, whether he's going to get the minutes. Uh, and that's going to determine everything for, for his upside, for sure. Um, but other than that, you know, I definitely have some interest in D'Angelo Russell, 8,300. That price tag is somewhat um, somewhat swallowable. I think it's absolutely going to be a guy that I'm going to be looking at. I mean, he's a guy that can put up 50 points uh, pretty easily, especially if the game stays close against the Grizzlies. Um, guy that can get I can rack up assists, can also score in bunches as well. Um, and I like him a lot. You know, that price tag is still relatively reasonable given his upside, uh, but that's pretty much it for me. I don't know if I'll have too many shares of, of Cat unless – unless there is indication that he's going to be a full workload, uh, at which point, you know, obviously you mentioned a 50-point minimum floor with 60, 65-point upside. Uh, but but and that's that's pretty much it on, on the T-Wolves for me. I think you've been with hoop ball now for about two seasons, Dave, and it took long enough, but you finally you finally made yourself uh, a locked-in staple of this group because you just trademarked your own word. I don't even know if you if you heard yourself say it. <laughs> um, but you, uh, you did a nice... You know, Santino, Mike special, where, you know, your brain's moving so fast, you combine the two words, and all of a sudden, you created a word. So, uh, I'll refresh you, just in case you didn't hear. Uh, the word you had created was swallowable. So, I think when you were talking about D'Angelo Russell, you are saying it's a tough price to swallow, but you are saying it was tolerable. So, you combined them, and we now have the word <laughs> swallowable, which we will be using quite often on this show. So, uh, shout out to you on that. That's trademark. That's stamp. Uh, the Dave Mankoff stamp of approval on swallowable. When uh, when you just you know you can do you can pay that price tag you don't love it but it's a good spot you know it's tolerable, uh, but that's it we'll keep we'll keep it moving it's worth saying yeah <laughs> congratulations on that man Chicago Bulls thank you so much to take on the Thunder uh, there's no game total there's no spread for this one right now guys uh, looking at the uh, injury report for the Bulls Devin Dotson Chandler Hutchinson Luke Cornett Tomas Sadoransky all ruled out Otto Porter's probable while Garrett Temple is questionable for OKC. 
Ty Jerome out. Darius Baisley, questionable with that ankle injury. Suffered in the last one. That's the injury that we're monitoring. And Trevor Ariza, he'll never play for this team. So, looking at the Chicago side of the ball, you know, Zach Levine at 9,500. I can't pay that price tag. I love him. He's been absolutely crushing it. This is a fantastic matchup. If you want to play him, I get it. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he has more upside than Cat in this matchup. I just love that Cat floor. So, I, you know, when it comes down to a push comes to shove again, different positions, I think I would just rather spend up on a different spot. That's the way I'm going to play it. Looking at Kobe White, 74, I don't mind that price tag. Probably prefer him over Zach Levine slightly, point per dollar. And I don't think I'm really playing anybody. We're supposed to expect to have uh, Laurie Market back for this game. As you saw, he wasn't on the injury report. So that value of power forward that we were getting from Otto Porter, you know, Pat Williams, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to get jumbled up now. So I'll take a hard pass on all those guys as well. And it's really just going to be Kobe White for me. Yeah, you, again, absolutely alignment. Um, I actually have some interest in Zach Levine. I know that price tag is a bit hard to swallow, but 9500 you definitely touched on it. It's a great matchup for him. So I'm going to have a lot of interest in Zach Levine as one of, one of my favorite plays. Uh, and, and I know from a pricing standpoint, it is a high price to pay, but he's been playing really well. Uh, his last two games, he's been putting up 60 points plus. Uh, and this is a great matchup for him to continue that kind of flow. Um, and with Laurie marking the mix, I don't think that's going to limit him at all. So I like him. And then you touched on it as well, Kobe White. His backcourt mate has been playing really well. Uh, that price tag hasn't really jumped too much. Um, outside of one dud on on the eighth against the Lakers, Kobe White's been playing fantastic with a minimum fantasy point of 38. So I really love Kobe White in this matchup against going into Oklahoma City. Um, so he's going to be absolutely swallowable. <laughs> Let's keep it moving then. On the OKC side of the ball, Shea Gildas Alexander. Uh, dude's coming off of a couple of sinkers. He's probably leaving a bad taste in people's mouths. Uh, understandably so. But he's very much in play. This is a great matchup for him. Chicago plays little to no defense in their backcourt. Seventy seven hundred. The price tag is not. It's probably underpriced for what he's uh, what he should be. Probably more around that eight eight one range is where he should be. Where you really have to consider it. And then if Basley's out, we have to take advantage of putting the front court. Um, you know, it might be Roby. It, it might be Alexi uh, Pokusevsky. It could be either one of these guys. They're both pretty solid point per minute producers. They're both pretty solid value plays. So I'll have interest in either one. Whoever's starting alongside of Horford. I, I'll play if or if I mean if Baisley is ruled out. So keep your eye on that news. I think I played uh, I played Roby. I locked him in as it's one of my favorite value plays in that last slate. I was expecting a little bore to be honest, but still it gave us a rock solid return and uh, got us to where we needed to. So that's it for me, Jay, and a couple of those value plays. Yeah, that's a great call out. Uh, Shay Gotis Alexander is absolutely going to be uh, probably my favorite play in this matchup. I know you mentioned it. He has been playing off the last two games. Before that, he was putting on 50 fantasy points very consistently. Um, so he's a guy that should break out of his slump in this matchup against the poor Chicago Bulls defense. So I love him. Um, I really love him. He's my favorite player, as I mentioned. Uh, and then uh, you touched on it. You know, depending on the news with Darius Baisley, Isaiah Roby is going to be absolutely in play at 3,700 for me as well. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the only other guy that I, I might throw in some some interest in is Ham- Hamadou Diallo, 4,900. Um, you know, a guy that does get a lot of usage, especially if Baisley ends up being out. Uh, another guy that I might have some interest in. But as far as interest, it goes Shea, number one, followed by Roby, and then finally Hamadou Diallo, number three for me. Uh, no, uh, no Pokemon love? No, no Poku love? All right, all right. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I have uh, I like this guy, his all around game. He's one of those guys where if when he's playing some decent minutes, uh, he can get it done in uh, multiple different ways, whether it's points, blocks. He can hit the three. And believe it or not, for a massively tall, lanky dude, he's got some decent handles as well. So uh, I always get a little intrigued by seeing him playing some minutes. He's kind of like ball ball ish. So keep your eye on both those guys, him and Roby. Uh, I like them both for value plays. But looking over on the next game, Atlanta Hawks traveling to Utah to take on the Jazz. Game total for this one, 223 and a half. Jazz favored by six. As far as injuries go, Atlanta Hawks, Paul Bogdanovich, Chris Dunn, Danilo Gallinari, all ruled out. Rajon Rondo, questionable. For the Jazz, Juwan Morgan, Joe Ingles ruled out. Derek Favors is probable. So, uh, Atlanta had that last game canceled, but they gave us the same price tag for Trey Young. Two straight games, 8700 You know, don't love the matchup. Don't love the fact that Trey Young's been nursing a sore wrist, but he's had a few games, a few days off. But I do love the price tag. So at 8700 it's you know not my favorite play, but it's very contrarian. I don't even know if it's contrarian because it's so cheap for him. But uh, you know maybe the matchup steers some people clear. So I'll, I'll have some interest in Trey Young and GPPs. Probably better cash options out there. Not playing John Collins. Uh, probably won't have too much Capella either. So for me, it's probably just a little Trey Young. And then if you want to take some shots on uh, Kevin Huerta or Cam Reddish, knowing that there's no Bogdanovich, both these guys should continue to see elevated minutes and elevated usage. So that's, that's it, man. <clears throat> I'm keeping it nice and light over here on Atlanta. Yeah, no, that's a great call. Uh, Trey Young is another guy that that's 
in need of, of a nice bounce back performance. So it's certainly going to be in play for me in GPPs. You mentioned it. Uh, and then another guy you didn't really touch on who I actually have interest in is DeAndre Hunter on this side of the ball. Priced at 6000 He's been priced pretty much in that 6000 range um, for, for a while now. Um, you know, his price tag has got, gone up a little bit since the beginning of the season, obviously, but he's been very consistent, providing solid floor value at around 27, 28 fantasy points, all the way up to, to 38 fantasy points. Um, I know this matchup isn't necessarily great for him, but he's certainly going to be in play for me on the Atlanta side. And that's it. You definitely touched on it. I don't have much interest in John Collins or Clint Capella in the front court on the Atlanta side. I think we can jump into the jazz. Absolutely. We'll keep it moving on the Utah side of the ball. And obviously a better spot for Utah because they are playing up in pace going against Atlanta. Donovan Mitchell coming in at 8,400. I I always have a little bit more interest when I look at the backcourt because I like to target, you know, just any guards going against Trey Young. Uh, Conley will probably be the guy that would be drawing most of the offensive slash defensive assignment against him. So at 6,900, I don't mind him, but it's also a great matchup for Donovan Mitchell. These guys are priced appropriately, so we will have better value out, out there. But, you know, don't mind them either. And especially, you know, knowing that they're that 9 o'clock game, uh, they might be on some turbo slates or some late slates, depending on where you're playing. And they're very viable for those types of options. I'm probably not going to play too much Rudy Gobert at 7,800. Don't mind them. Uh, just not not a GPP-type target. I think we also have better cash centers available out there as well. And if Joe Ingles is going to continue to sit, you know, Clarkson's priced up at 6,100. I don't like that price tag, but he's going to have all of that bench usage. And he's got 40-plus points in two out of the last three games, so... He's worth an option. It's a great matchup for him. Just the price tag is, uh, it's, 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 it's hard. It's not really swallowable. So <laughs> I'll pass it over to you on the Utah side. Yeah, no, um, definitely. You definitely hit the nail on the head in terms of, of the price tags uh, in that starting front of uh, starting back core. Apologies. Uh, with Donovan Mitchell being my favorite target of the bunch, um, 8,400, you know, he's a guy that I haven't been paying too much attention from a DFS perspective to start the season because he hasn't really been playing well outside of the 52-point game against the Bucks a few weeks ago. Um, sorry, a week ago. I don't know why it's a few weeks ago. Um, and outside of that, Mitchell, I think, is due for another great performance, and this is a perfect opportunity against, against the Atlanta Hawks defense to really have one of his ceiling games. And I actually like him. I know the price tag is a little interesting, but I prefer him over a similarly priced player like D'Angelo Russell. Um, so I really love him in this matchup. And then the only guy I'm looking at is Rudy Gobert. Um, I have some interest in Rudy Gobert, 7,800. He's been priced in, in that 7,000, mid-7,000, 7, low 800 range, coming off an absolute dud against the Cleveland Cavaliers, but I fully expect him to bounce back and, and has definitely has 40-point upside. Uh, I just, I'll just i probably stick to Gobert and GPPs um, more than cash games, but Mitchell is absolutely going to be a cash game staple for me. Zenni's Blocks lenses help to protect the eyes by keeping harmful blue light out. Because they're virtually clear, add blocks to any Zenni frame for stylish, all-day protection. Get a complete pair of prescription or non-prescription Blocks glasses starting at just $24. Protect your eyes now at Zenni.com. All right, two games left after that. It is a wrap, but before we go anywhere and before we continue, let me stop and give a shout-out to my boss, Aaron Brewski. As if you haven't checked out the Bruce Letter, it's free. Stop what you're doing. Go check it out. Uh, it's Honestly, it's one of the best things that we have over here at Hoopball, and it's, like I said, not a dime. It's our founder, Aaron Brewski, is writing an email newsletter filled with the most intimate fantasy nuggets. It's an excellent content that you cannot find anywhere else, not on the website, not in the podcast, not on social media. It's only a newsletter. And you can sign up and get it for free. Go to bit.ly slash bruise letter 2021 and sign up in 10 seconds. Again, the site is bit.ly slash bruise letter 2021. Boom. And while you're at it, check out the fantasy pass. You heard us mention the Discord several times already just on this show alone. And it's always jumping. It's always bumping. It's always got some of our pros in there. It's always got a bunch of other listeners in there. And it's just a great group of people just kind of mingling. Getting bouncing a day is off each other. You guys can get any questions you want answered regarding whether it's start, sit, line up, who we like more, who we're playing more, whatever it is, pick our brain. It could be year long, it could be regular, you know, strategy based. Uh, we're here to help you, and that's why we have that Discord. But the only way you get access to it with it is if you have either the DFS pass or the fancy pass. DFS pass only one ninety nine a month. It's an absolute steal. Dollar ninety nine a month. I don't know what the cent total is if you break it down. It's probably like fifteen cents a day or something like that. Sixteen. I don't know. It's 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 ridiculous. Probably not even. I'm now that I'm thinking about it. That's not right math. But nonetheless, it's a steal. And you not only do you get that access to the Discord, you get our premium articles that are behind the paywall, DFS related. And if you get the fancy pass, you get the whole cake caboodle. Yes, it's uh, it's a little bit more, but it's only four ninety nine a month. Let's be real. Not that much more. And you get access to everything that we have over here at Hoopball. Guys, check it out over at hoop-ball.com. Two games left, my good friend. New Orleans 
Pelicans traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Lakers. No game total for this one. As far as injuries are concerned, the Lakers, guess what? LeBron Davis, questionable. Surprise, surprise. They're not really hurt. This keeps happening. They're going to put them on there every single day for whenever they feel like sitting them. They will. Jared Dudley rolled out along with Costa Santacupo. And then we have Catavius Caldwell Pope. Probable. On the New Orleans side, Lonzo Ball out. Eric Bledsoe being considered questionable. Got to have to wait on some of the news over here on the New Orleans side because if we do hear that uh, Bledsoe is rolled out, I'm sure to kill Alexander Walker. We'll jump right back in there and be a fantastic value play. Uh, 4400 in this one. I mean, he was close to min salary in that last one. I was all over him, and it, I reaped the rewards. It paid off for me. So <clears throat> if we hear that both these guys are rolled out, I'll go back to the well. If Bledsoe plays, um, I'm not going to completely just cross him off because I do think this game has the likelihood and the chance of just getting out of hand. Uh, nonetheless, I will temper my expectations on him because I would assume that he still fares a decent amount of ownership. Other than that, I'm not playing Zion going against Davis. I'm not playing Ingram at 8,600 in this matchup. It's tough defensively. Uh, and Adams is priced accordingly at 64. So maybe outside of the chance at a Josh Hart, that's it for me, man. I really don't have a ton of interest on New Orleans. Yeah, that's a great call. I mean, I think if we get news... On Bledsoe, uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker doesn't become as interesting. Uh, that price tag like, has bumped up after his world-beater performance in the last one, single-handedly keeping keeping New Orleans in the game. Um, but 4,400 is certainly going to be in play for me, especially if Bledsoe is rolled out. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Brandon Ingram, I'll have some interest in 8,600. Um, certainly has an opportunity to, to really play well. Um, kind of a revenge game of sorts. Uh, against the Los Angeles Lakers that I'll probably be targeting that angle. If, if, if you want to play that angle, it's certainly going to be in play. Um, so I, I love Ingram at that price tag. Uh, I'll probably have some shares of him in GPPs. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I don't know if I have a lot of interest in Josh Hart. Um, and, and Steven Adams doesn't really jump off the page uh, just because the Lakers defend the big so well. Uh, 6400 is not really a price tag that I'm willing to pay. Uh, and that's pretty much it on, on the Pelican side of the ball. I think we can dive into Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't even know if it's a revenge game necessarily because it seems like they just did him a big favor. Uh, he got paid because of them. <laughs> Show him a thank you. Uh, if they never traded him, who knows what kind of contract he'd have right now. Sure. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I can't rule out Brandon Ingram. Just the price tag at 86, it's, it's where he should be. I don't know if we're getting a great value on it, but the guy can put up 40 and 50 on a nightly basis. It doesn't shock me one bit. On this Lakers side of the ball, Davis and LeBron, 98, 97. Won't be playing either one of them. I get it. It's Davis against New Orleans. But this game's in L.A. There's no fans anyway, really. So I'm not taking that into account so much. It doesn't really bother me. I like those other options like that we talked about earlier. Uh, even between, you know, I prefer Vucevic over him at 800 less. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to end up going to any of these guys. I don't think they're terrible options. If you land down, if you if you love them, if you want to play them, sure. I'm not trying to talk you off of them. I just don't see myself. When push comes to shove, i got to roll some of these guys out of my player pool. And I just don't have these guys in there at the moment. Uh, looking at some of these other options, if you know, if for some reason one of these guys were to sit, you know, Kuzma, uh, Harold, Broder, all three of these guys get a massive bump. I don't, you know, necessarily go after Taylor Horton Tucker unless I see multiple guys out. So that's kind of where I'm at on the Saker side of the ball. Uh, do you have any interest in LeBron or James or LeBron or James, LeBron or Davis? Uh, or are you kind of just looking at those other guys that we talked about earlier? Yeah, I don't really have a lot of interest on in the Lakers side of the ball, to be honest with you, in this matchup. Dennis Schroeder has some interest for me, 6,400, a guy that certainly has an opportunity, um, can, can put up some, some decent numbers in the starting unit. Hasn't really been shooting the ball really well outside of a couple of days ago, so I look for him to have a bounce-back shooting performance. If he does, I fully expect him to hit value, but I'll probably have limited shares of Schroeder, if any. I'm not going to have a lot of interest in LeBron James or Anthony Davis. Uh, those price tags are pretty consistent. I just It's hard to really know which one of them is going to go off in any type of matchup, and they're going to be limited by any type of, type of, of minute restriction. Uh, and with that said, it's hard to really trust them. I'll have limited interest, actually, in Marcus Gasol from a GBP perspective. I mean, that price tag is extremely low. He's not really getting a lot of minutes. Um, you know, and he's not really doing a lot with those minutes. So 4,200 is kind of bottom of the barrel pricing. So I have limited interest in Marcus Gasol, um, but strictly as a GPP punt. Um, and that's about it. All right. We'll move on to the final game. The Los Angeles Clippers going against the Sacramento Kings. So three California teams taking off in the uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time slot. So these will be your two late games late as well. As far as a game total, 231 game total. Clippers favored by six and a half. This is the highest game total that we have available at the very moment. Things might change once they get released. For the Clippers, Lou Will, Patrick Beverly, both questionable. For the Kings, Buddy Hill's probable. Duquan Jeffries is ruled out. So, looking at this Clippers side of the ball, with no Lou Will, no Beverly, potentially, there's going to be some minutes that open up. There's going to be some usage that opens up. Uh, now, there's not a real guard that stands out. You know, Reggie Jackson, minimum salary. He's somebody that I can see playing. 
you know, 20, 22 minutes. I don't think he's going to go out there and play 30 or 34 necessarily. Uh, but he's definitely a guy that I have some interest if, you know, one, if not both these guys are rolled out at 3K. But my primary options are going to be the heavy hitters. It's going to be, it's going to be Leonard. It's going to be George. Those are going to be the guys that are going to have the ball in their hands a little bit more. We'll probably see George, if not, uh, you know, over Leonard, get a few extra assists. So that's probably the guy I'm going to be gravitating the most towards. I don't mind Batum either. He's a guy that can handle the ball. They shot a few assists as well. It's just going to be these extra wing guys, I think, picking up the extra ball handling duties. Uh, but if Reggie Jackson is able to get a couple extra minutes as well, I don't hate him. So a minimum salary, Reggie Jackson, some Paul George, some Nick Batum. Those are my three favorite options. Where are you looking at the Clippers? Yeah, the Clippers side is certainly interesting. You mentioned Reggie Jackson, a minimum salary. I actually prefer Patrick Beverly. I know he's priced a little bit more... Uh, more of a challenge again, GPP only option, but I like Patrick Beverly at five thousand. Uh, a scrappy player that that does pretty much everything on the defensive side of the ball, and because of that, he's been putting up some ridiculous block numbers uh, to start the season. Um, and at that price tag, certainly going to be in play if, if he can knock down a few threes, he can get to maybe three or four three pointers in the game. Um, he could hit 25, 30 fantasy points. Uh, at which point, you know, suddenly he's going to be a great play and extremely low owned, especially given this matchup. Uh, and then I guess on the Clippers side, I also have some interest. It's hard to, to, to knock having interest in Paul George or Kawhi Leonard. Again, it's a matter of which one of them is going to go off every night, kind of Le- in LeBron AD um, kind of dilemma that we have. So it's it's hard to really trust either of them, uh, especially with both of them healthy. Um, so I'm not going to have too much interest there. And that, that's pretty much my, my level of interest in the Clippers side. I'm much more interested on the Kings side. Yeah, and I'm only playing Reggie Jackson if we hear that you know both guards are ruled out. I'll, I'll have slight interest if one's ruled out between Lou Will and, and Patrick Beverly. Right now, they're both questionable. So if they're both ruled out is where I think you know Reggie Jackson, a minimum salary, both those guards, he comes into play for sure. One's ruled out slightly. If they play, not touching them, but a 10-foot pole. Um, looking on the Sacramento side of things with De'Aaron Fox, 100, coming off a fantastic game, $700 price boost, tough matchup overall. Um Probably not gonna end up falling too much on De'Aaron Fox. I do like him slightly in this matchup. He's probably my favorite king. With that being said, I can see getting some Rashawn Holmes, 6,800. He's been playing great, but we've talked about so many centers already. Where push comes to shove, does he end up in my lineups? I'll have a couple shares. Keep in mind, it's not gonna go six to six again. Uh, he is playing great on the defensive end, though. I will say that when he's not in this rotation, when he's not playing every bit on the court, they bleed points in the front court. So uh, Holmes, maybe a little bit of Fox. That's probably it. Not touching Bagley. I never play Harrison Barnes. I don't care how many I got to take off the chin. And that's it for me. you have any interest in uh, Tyrese Halliburton? I love Tyrese Halliburton. I just don't love the price tag at 6700 uh, I think it's priced appropriately. If not, maybe a little bit of, even too high. Um, I'd probably prefer him if he was 62 63 But uh, maybe if a heel's out or someone's out, gets a couple extra minutes, sure. He'll continue to close the games play solid minutes, but you're relying on a, a you know above average shooting at the moment. I think he's shooting something like 54, 55 percent, which is great. Uh, we we hope most centers shoot that. So I I just think that's due for a little bit of regression, and the price tag will eventually drop down to where I want it to be. And when that happens, I'll jump on it. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I actually do have interest in Halliburton. Um, I know that price tag is high, but I, I've really been targeting some of these sud uh, rookie guards recently in DFS lineups and been paying off outside of the mellow ball cough cough yesterday. Um, so I actually like Halliburton. I know that price tag is high, but I'll have some interest in him. He's going to be, I think, fairly low-owned as well. So it could be a great pivot opportunity from guys like Malik Beasley, potentially, um, who are similarly placed uh, at the same position. Uh, and then outside of that, you, you mentioned it, Rashawn Holmes, 6,800, I'm going to have some interest in. Not a whole lot of shares against the Clippers, uh, just because the Clippers play a lot of different lineup combinations on the defensive end, so I'm not going to have too much interest. And then De'Aaron Fox, um, just, you know, just a guy rock steady as they come recently. I've uh, been putting up 43 points, uh, 43 points a couple of nights ago. And then uh, in the big one uh, last night, where it's 49 fantasy points. Uh, his price tag did jump to 8,100, but against the Clippers, you know, someone has to score the ball and, and provide all of that playmaking ability. And why not De'Aaron Fox? So I love De'Aaron Fox in this matchup. And, and, that's, and that's it. And that's all, folks, so on, on the Kings side. All right, my good friend. Ooh, that is it. That wraps us up. So. As always, guys, if you have a quick moment, go follow us on Twitter. You can find me at Mike Apatria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. And you can find Dave, let's see if I get this, D-Mank33, D-E, or D-M-E-N-K-33, correct? Nailed it. All righty. Took long enough. I'm a little slow with that kind of stuff, but I'll get there. Uh, and if you have a quick second, guys, give us a thumbs up, a rate and review, five stars, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to say something negative, we appreciate it anyway. We take the constructive criticism. Just put the five star in there anyway. You know, let's give it a little. Uh, I scratch your back, you scratch ours kind of thing. No, but in all reality, we'd really do appreciate it, guys. It means the world to us. You can find us on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, 
iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, you name it. It's all over the place. Uh, and it means a lot to us. So, as always, thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, looks like it's going to be Santino. And uh, I got to get the schedule down, man. It's brutal. Nonetheless, it's going to be a solid matchup. And if you haven't taken advantage of the DFS pass, jump on it. Jump to the Discord. I'm, uh, I'm popping in there night in and night out usually. If not, we always have at least two of our pros in there. So take advantage of it, guys. Thank you for listening. From everybody over here at Hoopball, let's go take down some GPPs. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.